coming out, the new edition this year. And uh, in her first talk, Liz, you will give us an overview right. of what has <laughs> changed. We're looking forward to your talk. Thank you. So, um, thanks, Phil. But uh, the first quest question I was asked is, why has it taken 10 years uh, for a new BIRADS to come out? And I honestly cannot answer that. It, it just was... Um, I think um, a long process and hopefully what has um, developed um, will be usable. Um, so just to give you um, a little hello, I just want to thank you first of all for inviting me um, again. It's a, a real pleasure to be here uh, and um, I love this conference because it's so interactive and um, it's a lot of fun and of course it's in Zurich which you, you maybe you don't appreciate but I do <laughs> because I come from New York and um, <laughs> but this is I'm lucky this is um, our our main hospital but this is our breast center which is a block away from this place here so this is all breast um, all of these floors and so oncology radiology surgery is all in this one place so this is where our breast patients come so it's a it's a fun place to work okay I just want to um, uh, acknowledge um, the people that I work with so okay the new BIRADS is finished you will definitely get it in the next um, I would say month or two it's gone to the printers it's done um, so it, it really is um, it, it is finished um, thank goodness we had we had these t-shirts made up uh, you know I survived by rads um, the, the, the fifth edition but um, but anyway um, the overview is that we hopefully have achieved uniformity across all modalities mammography ultrasound and MR so that very similar terms are used um, and um, that the organization of the reporting is pretty much the same so it should make it easier for everyone. Um, the other thing is, is it, it is going to be electronic. So it's going to be able to be changed and updated very um, rapidly. So we can have real time um, uh, uh, changes happen. We don't have to wait 10 years. There's going to be a lot of cross links that you can go to um, pertinent articles on PubMed. And um, the one thing that the um, ACR staff is really proud of is the cover. They put a lot of work into that new cover, the design. Personally, I think it's a little strange, but um, anyhow, it's supposed to show mammography, ultrasound, and MR. Um, and you will notice that the number of images has dramatically increased um, to give you um, examples of things. So these, the overall organizer was Carl Dorsey, Ed did the mammography section, Ellen did the ultrasound section, and I did the MR. And I just wanted to point out that all of these sections were combined of, um, of uh, uh, members, committee members um, from um, not only Europe, but also Japan. Um, and so we had a lot of input from all over the world. So for the mammography highlights, I'll just go over. I, in your syllabus, there's, I gave you everything, and, you're, and I'm certainly not going to go over all those slides in your syllabus, but that's for you if you want to go back and refer to it and, and see what are the actual changes. It's all there. So what I'm going to do in the talk, because I only have 20 minutes, is just highlight things. Okay, so for mammography highlights, this is now more clearly defined. And you heard earlier this morning what 4A, 4B, 4C is um, and the likelihood of cancer. This is optional reporting. You do not have to report out 4A, B, or C, but some people like to do it. Um, and, um, but it's, for us in the United States, it's not a part of our MQSA, which is our um, government oversight. Um, so we don't have to report it, but we, a lot of people like it. The percentage range for breast density is gone. No more is it 0 to 25%, 25 to 50%, because we realize that especially now with um, quantification of density, that, um, with, um, that those percentages may not hold up once we um, have um, CAD systems that can actually tell us which um, breasts are dense and which ones are not dense. Uh, lesion location terms are improved, and um, uh, this is... Uh, uh, an important one for us for auditing, you cannot call a BIRADS-3 directly from a screening mammogram anymore. Um, it used to be that you could, um, but uh, that cannot happen anymore. You have to bring the patient back, work her up, and then call it a BIRADS-3. 
Um, BIRADS, similarly, BIRADS 4 and 5 cannot be assigned directly from a screening mammogram. And as you've also heard this morning in a beautiful talk about the ultrasound changes, the assessment and the management are now separated for all modalities, ultrasound, mammography, and MR. So you could have a BIRADS 3 or you could have a BIRADS 2 assessment for a mammogram, but the patient has a symptomatic palpable cyst that she wants aspirated. You could put BIRADS 2 benign, recommend aspiration of the symptomatic cyst. So you don't have to code it as a BIRADS 4 because you're recommending an intervention. So the, um, the actual assessment of the exam and the management recommendations do not have to be so closely aligned because we realize that there are a lot of situations where you may want to do a biopsy in um, a negative imaging um, uh, situation. Um, also, there's just some terminology changes um, that it used to say for four, suspicious biopsy should be considered, and now it's going to say tissue diagnosis. For five, it's, it's going to say biopsy should be performed in the absence of contraindication, and six, it says um, for known cancer, surgical excision considered when appropriate. So, so just some verbiage changes um, for recommendations. You heard um, about the ultrasound highlights and about how anatomy is more clearly defined. Uh, transducer frequency needs to be more than 10 megahertz. Um, added descriptors for composition. Some descriptors are now associated with findings. And then there's this new term, complex cystic and solid mass. We heard about added elastography descriptors, and we've had some beautiful talks um, on that. And there's also an expanded discussion of what should be a BIRADS 3 on um, ultrasound. Now, I have to tell you, that last line um, is why the last six months of BIRADS was held up getting published, because there was a lot of discussion about what should be a BIRADS 3 on ultrasound, OK? On MR, we didn't even go there. Um, so we didn't have a, any discussion. That's still a work in progress for MR, is what is a BIRADS 3 um, on MR. Uh, so on MR, what we've added is um, an assessment of fibroglandular tissue, background enhancement. We've tried to streamline the descriptors. We added a section on non-enhancing findings and also a section on fat-containing lesions and implants. Okay, so we've sort of expanded the whole thing. So the first thing is um, uh, fibroglandular tissue and background enhancement. We're all very familiar with that, that it goes from minimal, mild, moderate, and marked. So here are four women with um, a lot of breast tissue, a lot of fibroglandular tissue, but they all enhance differently. So um, the new uh, lexicon takes that into consideration. For masses, what we've done is we've collapsed the, um, the shape categories, and now you only get to choose between round, oval, or irregular. So here's round, oval, and irregular, so a nice fibroadenoma. This was a um, lymph node, and here's an obvious cancer. And we took those descriptors from uh, BIRADS uh, mammography. The margins, like with ultrasound, are now um, circumscribed versus non-circumscribed. So this has tried to make it easier for you to describe things on MR and um, ultrasound so that the same kind of thought processes are going on in your head. Um, so we have circumscribed masses like here and here um, and irregular, um, not circumscribed, and that can be further defined as irregular or spiculated. This would be spiculated and this is irregular. So this is also um, adapted from mammography. Internal enhancement, we got rid of a couple of, um, of descriptors, central enhancement and enhancing septations, because they were not widely used. But we did keep these four. Um, uh, so we've sort of made it a lot cleaner and decreased the number of uh, descriptors. Here we removed ductal for non-mass enhancement because we, the committee felt that that described an anatomic structure and we preferred linear. Um, like here, here's some cases of DCIS, and these are all DCIS cases. 
And uh, for non-mass enhancement, we also removed the term stipple because that's really a type of background enhancement. So you're left with homogeneous, heterogeneous, and clumped. But we added this new descriptor, clustered ring, because um, Dr. Tazaki from Japan has published on this, and there has been some literature that show that it's possibly a new finding, and we're now seeing it more at high resolution. And it's um, examples like this where you see a small area of uh, clustered ring enhancement, and this was an area of DCIS. Um, you can also see this with benign um, findings here at 3T. This clustered ring is um, actually in fibrocystic uh, changes. And here's another example of um, benign um, uh, clustered ring that um, actually turned out to be uh, ductectasia. This is an interesting case because you can actually see there's enhancement around the ducts here, but you can see air within the ducts that you can see on the mammogram. So um, I showed this case to Laszlo and I said, how come you get air in the ducts? And he said, there's only two ways. You either blow or you, you suck, okay? So that's what he told me. So I'm, if anyone has ever seen this before, air in the ducts, um, it puzzled us for a while. Um, but anyway, it was benign, okay? Uh, anyway, we added a section on non-enhancing findings like um, pre-contrast uh, in the duct here, um, cysts. Hematoma. So none of this stuff was in the prior BIRADS, and we see it all the time. So we um, defined what it is, and we added um, this section. And we also um, didn't mess much with the associated features. Um, you know, these are features that you see um, when there's a malignancy. You can see nipple retraction, uh, nipple invasion, skin retraction, skin invasion. So pretty much this is all the same as it was in the prior, um, prior one. We did add um, a section on fat-containing lesions um, so that we had an ability to describe lymph nodes as well as fat necrosis, um, hamartomas, and post-operative seromas with fat. Um, so that is new. Um, the kinetics all remain the same. So um, anything you know about kinetics, um, you don't have to modify at all. And the overall assessment is also the same. Um, generally, we favor an assessment for each breast. Um, however, if it's straightforward screening MR, you can just give a single assessment, a BIRADS1 or a BIRADS2, and that's adequate. Um, the new BIRADS is trying to limit the use of BIRADS0, which is an incomplete assessment for MR. Um, it should only be used if you need to get old MR exams to compare or if you need additional imaging in order to prevent a biopsy. So for example, would be, um, say you see something on MR and you think it could be a cancer or a lymph node, but I would like to have an ultrasound to see what it is. That would be great for a BIRAD zero. Um, and the same thing for, um, for possibly fat necrosis um, on MR. And this is an example here. We did this exam here, and it looked, we weren't sure if that was fat in there. The non-fat suppressed images um, did not show fat, um, but we thought maybe it's a rim-enhancing small mass, but we went to uh, ultrasound, and we could easily see that this is a lymph node. Um, so uh, let's see, okay. So here, if you see a suspicious finding on MR, um, should be coded as a four or a five, uh, not a zero. Even if you want to do a targeted ultrasound after it to do a biopsy, um, it's a suspicious finding that should be coded as such. Now here's a question for you uh, for BIRADS uh, assessment. This is the known cancer. You do the MR, you see a suspicious additional mass. How should it be coded? Is it coded as a known cancer, a BIRADS-6, or should it be a BIRADS-4 or, bi or BIRADS-5? It should be a BIRADS-4 or a 5 because it's an actionable item and you need to do a biopsy of that second area before um, making a definitive diagnosis. So, um, so this used to call, cause a lot of confusion. People used to um, code it as a six, a known cancer, and then um, if it falls through the cracks, that second mass may um, not get um, uh, biopsy. 
Okay, so for MR and BIRADS3, there are still very few data out there, but there are some studies that show you can get less than 2% malignancy um, in some cases. Um, what is important is that background enhancement should not be coded as a BIRADS3 assessment. It's really based on a unique finding above and beyond the um, uh, background enhancement. For example, say you see a mass on a screening MR with benign features, you can follow that, or you have a new focus on the screening exam, you can follow that as well. So my last slide, um, BIRADS is definitely finished. It's here, um, there is an electronic uh, version, and there's uniformity across modalities, and um, there are, um, there's help for auditing as well. And thank you very much for your attention.